Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Wilkinson, who's like an old hand at our committee. It's nice having you back. And Mr. Gibo, this is your first time. Welcome. So I will talk to you, Mr. Gibo, because we talked with Mr. Wilkinson a fair number of times. We hope we'll talk to him a lot more in the coming uh, study. Um, National News are reporting this afternoon that your government is approving Bay du Nord. Is that true? Uh, it is true that National News are reporting that, yes. So are you? I, there's, there's no official announcement that has been made yet. That's a one billion barrel project, right? The, the, the company said between 300 million and barrels billion. And, and, and a billion. Yeah. So last week you approved um, 300,000 barrels a day to help Europe. Bay du Nord would be another 200,000 barrels a day. So that's half a million barrels a day. I didn't read that in your climate plan. Uh, where did that come from, this decision to start approving new projects like Bay du Nord? Well, actually, if you'd read the climate plan attentively, um, you, would have, you would have seen that the plan is rests on a number of different data sources, including the, the, last, uh, the, the, the last study from the Canadian Energy Regulator that forecasts an increase in production in Canada. Uh, so, so you are on side. So, so the Canadian Energy Regulator is saying we're going to get a, a million barrels a day, so that's what you're, you're agreeing with, that that's where we're going? The question is not whether or not we agree or disagree with the Canadian Energy Regulator. Uh, the question is, did we use the Energy Regulator uh, as one of the data source to prepare yep. our, our, our emission reduction plan? And the answer to that question is yes. And, okay. and despite those growth in production, our plan clearly shows, to the satisfaction of a number of experts, someone you may know, uh, Andrew Reaver, IPCC scientist. No, actually, I don't know him, but he did come here. But anyways, uh, what I'm interested in is the fact that under the uh, your plan of this billion dollar project that may or may not be approved. Uh, in between your plan and this big announcement that may be happening, the IPCC um, released their report this week. Did you read that report? I have read the report, as I've read every yeah. single report since I'm, 1990. I'm glad because they say it's now or never that we're at the point of catastrophic, irreversible climate change. Would you agree with that assessment? I would agree with many things that the IPCC said this week, um, including the fact that countries need to present plans where they show re emission reduction in every sector of their economy. And then we have three that's years. That three years. To, that, that, to that emission have to peak and, and reduce, and that's exactly what's happening in Canada. Years, but but, yes. but Bay du Nord is not going to come on for three years, so you guys are seem to be at cross purposes. No, but I want to ask all. you it another will, thing about the IPCC. It will fit under the cap. It will have to fit, will under, fit the under the cap. cap? Okay, well, but we don't have a cap. So uh, this is where I want to get to because the UN Secretary General said this week in response to that, the government leaders are saying one thing and doing another on the environment. He said government leaders are, quote, lying and the response will be catastrophic. So you went to COP26 and promised an emissions cap. We're still here waiting to see it, but what we've seen in the meantime is 300,000 barrels last week, 200,000 barrels this week in perpetuity for at least 30 years. Um, would you feel that the IPC, IPCC, or, that IPCC, I'm sorry, I'm so dyslexic with that, sorry. but that the UN uh, general would have uh, been unfair in saying that government leaders who come to COP26 and make these promises are lying and then go back and then it's business as usual? We have this expression in French, and I don't think there's a, a good translation, but si le chapeau vous fait, mettez-le. Um, I don't think the hat fits for us, because we're doing exactly what the IPCC says we should mm. be doing. We're capping emissions and, 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 and reducing them. Okay. Our emissions have started reducing in Canada. We have projections for every sector between now and 2030. We have a price on pollution, which is saluted globally as one of the most effective tools to, to tackle climate change. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And, 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 and you know, by the way, Bob, Bob Marley would say if the cap fits, wear it. So I'm uh, just wondering whether you should be wearing the cap because But in an January, experienced parliamentarian like you knows to know that we can't do uh, new regulations on, on, on a corner of a table. We I have get to, that. We but have a duty to consult, including but with But where did you people? consult on Bay du Nord? I for, mean, for 40, industry. For you guys have 6,800 meetings with the oil lobby. If you announce Bay du Nord, this you are contradicting the and promises that you are making. And so if you, if, if so you let's look, go back. Just let me no, finish here on, on the issue. Of, <laughs> I'm, but I haven't got to my question yet. So <laughs> the issue is if you're consulting, 400 scientists wrote and said, do not fall for the plan that the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers is pushing on 
uh, carbon capture. They said it's financially risky, it's not proven at scale, it's not verifiable for actually storing CO2, and then the kicker is it's not going to come on stream for six to eight years. So when I read your plan, which is heavily dependent on carbon capture, if it's 50 billion or 75 billion that you're going to give them, if it's not coming on stream for six to eight years, you're not meeting your 2030 targets, right? Let's just, why don't we just say, this is what we're going to invest in big oil. We're going to continue to pr promote uh, Bay du Nord. We're not going to meet those targets. It'd be better to just be honest with us on this than to claim that you're going to miraculously hit these targets while within the space of a week you alone have signed off on half a million new barrels a day of production. And you're telling us at the CER, which is saying that there's going to be over a million barrels a day, that's on your plan as well. So. I'd like to quote uh, directly from the IPCC report on, uh, they call it CCS, they don't call it CCUS, paragraph C.4.6, where they refer to CCS as being a, a critical technology needed for, for the world to achieve the so emission reduction. So the scientists reduction. in Canada were wrong when they said that I'm, this I'm was unproven, I'm, I'm, unverifiable? I'm quoting the IPCC here. And, uh, Let's just be clear, Charlie. The 400 were not experts in the field. There were weren't. very few people who signed that letter okay, that were well. experts in the field. If you look at the IEA, well, know, you look at the IPCC, I mean, you look at the, the International at the Renewable Canadian Energy Association, Association you look at the work that's been done in, in Norway, yeah, in Australia, and in a number of countries around the world, what you've just said is full of factual errors. No, 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 no. We're out of time in this one, and uh, it does make it very challenging for the interpreters when there's more than one conversation going. So we're, we're at the uh, six Sorry, minutes. since they interrupted me, do I get an extra minute? <laughs> you got an extra half a minute there. Oh, thank you. So, no, no, it's, you've already gone over. <laughs> so um, so, we're so gonna, quickly. No, no, we're, we're done that six minutes. Well, you were already half a minute over.